Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. Let's take a look at a way that we can use complex numbers to find the uh, dimensions of a right triangle. In particular, let's suppose that you have complex numbers, we can think of them as vectors. Let's suppose we have one right here, which is like something like um, one and suppose like five, suppose you have something over here like two and four, and we want to know pretty much how this projects onto here. So we'd like to know this distance, and we also like to know that distance. Okay, and maybe to top it off, if we thought of these vectors as vectors, we could make a parallelogram, maybe a way, a quick way that we could actually get the area of that parallelogram. And we're just gonna use complex numbers. All right, so first, here's a positive x-axis. I'd like to rotate this picture down to the positive x-axis. Now, when we multiply it, when we do complex multiplication, if we don't use a unit um, vector or a unit a complex number that's one away from the origin, it's also gonna expand. It's gonna rotate when we multiply, but it's also gonna expand the picture. It may be okay the way it expands some, some, sometimes, but, um, but also we can also get rid of the expansion by dividing by the length of whatever we're multiplying by. Okay, so let's start off knowing like how much do we need to, what do we need to multiply by so that this comes down here? So, so that it comes down there, we need something that has that angle, a negative angle. Basically, this just reflected down. So this looks like two comma negative four. And as a complex number, that is two minus four i. That's what we're gonna be multiplying everything by in this picture. And it'll rotate it down, but it's also going to expand everything by the length of this, to make it a little bit longer. So at least we'll have a triangle that's in the right place after we rotate, but the sides will be too long. Um, they'll all be multiplied by the length of this, which we can find via the Pythagorean theorem. Simply just think of it as a vector. You just square that, square that, add them together, square root. So four plus 16 is 20, take a square root. So square root of 20. So basically we're gonna get square root of 20 times the actual, and square root of 20 times the actual, and we'll have square root of 20 times the actual. Just keep that in mind when we do this little computation. So we have two minus four i, and we're gonna be multiplying that to everything here. Now, the most important thing to really multiply it to um, in reality is just this one, is this one right here. Because for this triangle, you notice how two four doesn't really fit into the triangle. It's just what we're multiplying by to kind of rotate and expand. But really one five is kind of the part that's important. So think of a complex number here that describes this. This is one plus five i. Okay, so let's multiply this. Now, when we multiply this, we're gonna get a real part and an imaginary part. The real part is going to be this length right here after we rotate it. And the imaginary part is gonna be that part. So this is gonna be the imaginary part. Okay, so we can think of this in terms of imaginary and real. So if we think about how we FOIL something out, FOIL is kind of an acronym for what we kind of can combine when we do two things times two things here, added together inside of the factors. So what we have is um, F refers to this, first and first. L refers to last, that and that. Now notice those are the only full, those are the only two ways you can actually get something real out of this multiplication. So full is gonna be the real part. So we get two, and then here we get five times negative four, it's negative 20, but then I squared makes it negative again. So negative, negative, so plus 20. All right, so we get 22 for the real part. Now, what about for the imaginary part? It's the oi. 
oi means outside and inside. So we get one times negative four, that's negative four, and five times two, that's 10. Now notice we really have an I here and an I here, but I'm only gonna focus on the coefficients because that's all that matters as we're thinking about lengths here. So we have negative four and 10, so that would be six. Okay, so this, is act this imaginary part right here is six. Um, now, right here, this is gonna be square root of 20 times the actual here to get that hypotenuse length. So we could get that hypotenuse length. Um, um, so to get the, uh, uh, that, that particular hypotenuse length, um, maybe by doing a Pythagorean theorem of sorts or whatever, but let's kind of concentrate right here on this guy and this guy. Okay, so we know this is 22 after the multiplication. So how, what's the actual? The actual is gonna be 22 divided by square root of 20. That would actually be the projected length right here. You can check, it's actually the same thing that you would do if you did a dot product with vectors and then divided by the, the length of what you're projecting onto, which is two, four. Hey, that length actually is square root of 20 itself. You're dividing by it and it, it dot, check dot product two and 20. Yep, it, it's exactly the projected length. It's exactly what we wanted. The imaginary part we actually get for free as well, right over here. It's nice, from the same computation, you get two things. You get this side and that side. Um, so um, six. And then you take six and divide by square root of 20. And then you'll actually get that height right here. Okay. And then you could use those to find maybe this length here. But you could get this length also by doing another Pythagorean theorem just by what you normally do with length of things, just this one. So one and five, or one, so one squared plus five squared. So that'd be square root of 26. And if you notice, if you take these two guys and square them, um, uh, and if you take, uh, yeah. And then if you take, um, in the particular, if you take these two guys and square them, that'd be kind of a big computation, right? Um, See so 22, 22 times 22, we get four and four and four and four, you get, 84 and you add 36. Um, so that would be what 490 and 520. 520 divided by 20, which actually is 26. Yep, let's go to 26. So it works. So it works both ways. Um, just to verify. Okay. Now we get the lengths of this right triangle. Now, how can we get actually the area of that parallelogram? So the area of that whole parallelogram is actually equal to this height right here times the base length. The base length is square root of 20, square root of 20 times that. So it's square root of 20 times the height. The height, remember, the actual height was six over square root of 20. If you multiply that times square root of 20, you get six, which is the area of that parallelogram. Notice that this six is actually just oi. That's because Multiplication by square root of 20 is already embedded in here. It's hidden inside of this. That expansion itself multiplies by the base. So the new height, actually, the new height, which is six, after the expansion included multiplication by 20 to the actual. So really the new height is equivalent and equal to the area of that parallelogram. So you can easily find areas by doing complex multiplication. By no dividing or length finding at all, you can just uh, areas of parallelograms. You can just take. You can simply just do a computation like this. You can take this vector times its what's called its complex conjugate when you make that the imaginary part negative, um, and the imaginary part, at least the absolute value of it, will be the area of that parallelogram. Thanks for watching.